Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and I thank you so much for tuning in. I thank you for supporting my channel and supporting this community that I am building for you so that you can uh, be nourished spiritually, mentally, and physically. And today I am finally recording a video after some time. I haven't recorded a video because the reality is that now that I'm you know, homeschooling and I'm doing all these things, I have little windows of time to record. And the reality is that, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a lot of background noise. But I'm like, you know what the heck with that? I'm going to record these videos for you guys because I feel that it's important for me to continue to communicate with you guys what's going on in my life. Uh, an update on my marriage and how I navigate my marriage in a way that, you know, although I have my down times and I have my down days, I still have hope. I still have joy in my heart. Um, I may f have my small waves of immense sadness and maybe it can maybe even be depression but i always it's it's like i i tell a lot of people it's like a rough wave you just have to learn how to ride that wave and and, and know that it's coming rough waves will come and that is what it feels like for me especially being married to a man that has a lot of narcissistic tendencies one of the things that i wanted to share with you guys is the process of healing right now and 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 with that i want to give you an update on my marriage a lot of things have changed for the better. Um, my husband helps me more without me having to ask. He'll help me. He sees my needs a little more than he used to before. Um, and I'm very appreciative over that. And what I can say is that what has helped me a lot within this marriage is learning to shift my expectations. What do I mean by that? When you are with a narcissistic person, your partner, your spouse, your husband, they tend to be very selfish. They tend to think only about themselves, their needs, their emotional needs with little regard for yours. That's how I, I've always felt. I've always felt invisible in my marriage until recently where I feel that now my feelings matter a little more or what I want or need matter. However, I still have those episodes and I'll share this with you guys. About, I think a week ago, um, my husband said harsh words. He basically told me in his own way, um, he basically told me that I, he understands that I'm going through a healing process because of everything, like the pain that he has caused in the past years of marriage. But he made it seem like I wasn't worth waiting for. Um, and wh wh what he meant by that is right now I feel the effects of the seven years of being with a narcissist. What does that look like? I Right now I feel very cold. I feel very numb to being affectionate. I don't want to be affectionate and that is my norm. I'm usually a very affectionate person. But, you know, after living in a marriage for, you know, it's going to be eight years with this person that has narcissistic tendencies... All the hurt and the pain that he has caused me has had an effect. He is experiencing those effects. My lack of being, you know, sweet, um, you know, extra affectionate, extra attentive. I no longer feel those things. And if I do um, not feel them, but if I think about, you know, being more attentive, being more sweet, being more kind. Now it's something that has to be intentional versus it just being a natural process and just it's just coming out naturally. So right now, the update on that is, uh, the update on my marriage is that I'm going through a healing process because of the seven years that I endured the massive, you know, amounts of, you know, narcissistic effects, like feeling invisible, doubting myself, you know, for, for very long, I felt like I wasn't enough. I felt like, you know, am I not worth it? You know, I questioned myself in so many ways. And now that I no longer question myself, now that I no longer um, feel bad or feel that I'm not enough or, you know, have nurturing those feelings, I'm no longer thinking of those things. I'm no longer feeding those thoughts. I have shifted my expectations. I know what to expect. Uh, a week ago when he actually said something that was very mean, um, he basically told me that I wasn't worth waiting for throughout my healing process. Um, you know, when he said that, it hit me. And it hit me very hard because I'm like, but he still doesn't realize who I am. Again, back to the feelings of being invisible. So what did I do? And, and this is what I wanted to express and go through. How do I cope with that at that moment? How do I cope? I came into my little area and I began to cry. I literally cried for like an hour and a half. After I let it out, I accept what is. 
what tends to happen when we just have a dis, you know we're, we had just had an argument with our husband we tend to go down that that trail of thoughts you know we go through the aren't i enough how can he say that to me I'm worth it. I think I'm worth it. Why doesn't he see it? Why can't he see it? Why can't he try to love me? Why can't he try to understand me? Why can't he understand my emotional world? Instead of heading down that path, I don't allow myself to go through that. Instead, I accept what is. He hurt me. These things really hurt me. I accept that it was painful, but I have to continue to move on. I let it out, I cry it out, and then I tell myself, I continue to refocus and I need to focus on the things that I can control. We cannot control how our narcissistic husband will react, how he will, you know, how he will say things, what he's going to say. We can't control him. You know, we can't control those things, but we can control what we do afterwards. We can control how we react to the things that they, you know, the things that they say. So that's what I did that night. I cried it out. I shifted my focus and I said, you know what? I know this is who he is. Instead of trying to convince myself, he's going to change. He's going to be better. Why can't he do this? You know, why can, when is he going to change? God, when are you going to give me my miracle? Th that kind of uh, thought process is going to lead you to questioning, ruminating. You're going to continue to circle the same thoughts over and over again, and you're not getting anywhere. That's the reality. We're not getting anywhere when we continue to ruminate over the things that we cannot change. That's just, just the reality. It's normal. I, I thought, and I, I was thinking about this after, I, I literally thought about this for 10 minutes. You know, I was, I was going in through this thought process where I was like, you know, I wish things were different. I wish that, you know, I can really feel this immense affectionate pull towards my husband. I wish that I can, you know, feel differently towards him and I can treat him differently. Um, but I have to accept that this is what it is. I cannot continue to focus on dreaming about what things can be like. Instead, I have to be realistic and accept what is, shift my expectations. You know, he will, a narcissistic person will hurt you. They are going to say mean things. They will catch you off, off guard. They're not going to understand you. There's going to be times where you, you need them to understand you. You feel this like, oh my God, I am speaking to you, you know, in a robot way so that you can understand me and yet you still do not like why and then that's when you begin to question yourself and I honestly that's the one thing that I want to recommend the most if there's something that you take away from this video today is that as I go through my healing process I truly try to refrain from thinking about those things thinking about what could you know, what could it be? You know, how beautiful of a marriage it could be if he were like this. You know, we cannot think about the things that are not true and realistic to our life right now. What do I do when those things happen so that I can continue to heal from the seven years of narcissistic, I guess, lashing? Um, what do I do? I continue to do that. I focus on the things that produce the emotions and feelings of purpose. I am homeschooling my kids, as I was um, telling you guys, and that to me gives me the greatest joy. Like, I love teaching my kids. I love being with my kids. They make me laugh. We have a good time. We do a lot of our creative activities. And for me, I feel that motherhood, when you are a mom, you are called, you are called, listen to that word, you are called into motherhood. You are called, it's a calling. Um, and when you are called, any calling that you are called to is purposeful. So I try to, like I said, I go through that list. I accept what is. I shift my expectations. I tell myself my husband is this way. I cannot change him. And I cannot continue to ponder on the changes that I would love to see. I accept what is. And I only focus on the things that I can control. What did I do at the end of that night that I was crying and bawling? I continued to work. I continued to devote my time, my energy, because when you think, that's energy that you're spending. I focused all my energy and spent all my time working on, you know, I, I work with many uh, clients Christian uh, with Christian ministries. And I just continued to work again and I continued to read again and I continued to that night. I literally ended and I was happy and I was again, I was at peace. You know, I for me, I feel that the goal is for you to feel peace. Are you at peace? You need to ask yourself, what gives you peace? 
Is it going for a walk? Is it going to the beach? Is it going and reading a book? What gives you peace? You need to, instead of focusing on all the rumination and thinking about all the thoughts that make you feel unworthy and, you know, am I not enough? Instead of focusing your energy on that, focus your energy on how can I feel better? Like, I'm going to do whatever it takes so that I can feel better, so that I can feel peace, so that I can feel joy. What's going to give me that? I feel that we do not realize that our life, when we are married, we're not just a wife. It's one aspect of your life. Being married and being a wife, that's just one thing. You are not just a wife. You are a person. I am Maritza. You know, uh, I am a person. I am a woman. I have wants. I have needs that are not connected only to love and comfort from a man. So you need to focus on the areas that are amazing, that are great. And if you can hear my daughter, that's my daughter. <laughs> um, but you need to focus on the things that bring you joy. Focus, guys. Shifting your focus and dominating the art of focus is a game changer. It's going to change many things for you. Focus. What are you focusing on? What is your... Never let your mind wander. When you allow your mind to just wander without, like, just aimlessly, without destination, without purpose you will wander 90% of the time, you're going to wander onto thoughts of regret, pain, sadness, worry. It's going to, the thoughts that are, that are going to, you're allowing to enter your mind when you wander are not positive. Most of the time they are negative. So focus your time and energy on things that produce purpose. Get into a zone of creativity. If you are a creative person, begin to create something that you're proud of. If you are a writer, begin to write. You know, think about that book that you haven't published. Think about that business idea. You know, those are the other layers to your life. You are an entrepreneur. You are a writer. You are a creative. You are an artist. Uh, you have artistic abilities. You have you know, begin to launch something, launch something that you are proud of, launch, create and launch something that's amazing to you. Um, start a YouTube channel, but focus on you, focus on the things that make you smile. This makes me smile up uh, being able to share with you guys my life and the things that I go through so that it can help you know that you're not alone. You're not the only woman that feels invisible, that feels misunderstood that is not understood by her husband that uh is it feels like you know you're not enough i have felt that i still feel that sometimes and i have i but i do not allow myself to dwell on those thoughts i don't allow myself to dwell on those on those words on those those resounding that anthem that is that was very loud for seven years i am trying to build a new story in my mind i'm trying to build a new story in my day-to-day -day. and that's what i encourage you today guys Accept what is. Stop trying to change things. Stop trying to uh, think about, you know, how your husband can change. Think about you. What can you do? What are you going to do? What are you setting in place today, right now, that's going to flourish in 2021? Think about you. And that's what I want you guys to take away. It is a gift to learn how to focus and, and dominate the art of shifting your focus, your mind. Everything happens in your mind. So uh, that is the update for now. In my marriage, I, do we have our arguments? Absolutely. But the best way to navigate uh, the rough waves when you are in a narcissistic marriage is to accept what is acceptance. Acceptance. Shift your focus. Know that those rough waves, you know, of, you know, gaslighting, they're going to come. But how you respond mm -hmm. to them time and time again is what makes a difference. I no longer respond to it as much. I no longer give in to those things as much. If he denies my reality, oh well. I could care less if he denies my reality. I know what my reality is. I know what he said. I know what he didn't do. I know what he did. And if he denies those things and he's telling you, no, I didn't. I never did that. And then he flips the conversation on you. Do not take it personal. That's who they are. Narcissistic People, we want them to take responsibility for their actions, but the reality is that they will not take responsibility for their actions. And if they do, it doesn't feel that it, it, it's sincere. And that's why I am on a healing journey because the fact that narcissistic people, men, are not sincere and genuine and they do things because they want to see a certain result or because something is in it for them, I am in that healing process where. I need to learn how to trust, not necessarily trust him, but trust that I will be okay. 
I trust that I'm going to be okay. God has got my back. You know, I have, I have my own back, you know, develop that kind of assertiveness. I used to be the kind of person that wanted to please him. I wanted to please him because I also wanted him to notice me. And I realized that I no longer want to be this person, this woman that is trying to please everyone else when I should be trying to pursue my own sense of joy and happiness. So today, I urge you, shift your focus and chase, focus in on what brings you joy. Think about your purpose. You have a lot of purpose. God has given you massive amounts of purpose in many ways, not just as a mom, but as a person. There are people out there that need your help. There are people that need to hear about your experiences. And I encourage you to do that, whether it's in writing, whether it's through a book, whether it's through opening your own YouTube channel or creating an online course. Um, I just encourage you to get into some kind of entrepreneurship uh, endeavor. That way that that way you can focus in your um, focusing on your Gifts and talents. God has given you so many gifts and talents. What are they? Discover them. Hone them. Sharpen them. Learn. Grow. Read things that are going to make you feel better, that are going to cultivate, help you cultivate new habits, you know, healthy habits in your life, whether it's your eating habits or, you know, your mind, um, how to be more mindful, how to develop self-awareness. Guys, life, there are a lot of elements to your life. You're not just a wife. You are a beautiful woman, a beautiful human being with a beautiful soul that needs to be nurtured. So I, I, I urge you and I encourage you, go and nurture yourself. And nourish your mind, nourish your soul, nourish, nourish your spirit. Guys, thank you so much. I am so grateful for you guys tuning in. Stay tuned for my next video that I will be posting another one this week. So guys, God bless you. I'll talk to you soon.